Hey guys, welcome back. So if I'm sounding a little bit raspy today, it's because I've had a really, really long day. Um, it is currently 11, oh, 11, 11. Well, it's the end of a really long week and I've had, um, I think I woke up at 3.45 this morning or my first alarm went off at 3.45. I woke up at like 4.15 for work and I had a really long day and I came home and then I like completely passed out like dead just dead to the world and then I woke up I had dinner and I still need to film a video for this Sunday's upload and I messaged my group chat and I was like guys should I film right now like should I wash my whole face off put on a full face of makeup and start filming at like 11 p.m. or should I eat some cake and play beat star and then Charmaine immediately jumped on and was like you should film and I was like uh okay so here i am filming um it's very late but um i'm gonna try to get through this video really quickly because i only have like a day to edit and get this video up for sunday so i'm gonna try to keep this video down to less than 45 minutes but that said, I'm feeling a little bit chatty right now, so we'll see how that goes. So anyways, this video is going to be an update on all of the imports I've done this year. I've done um, imports, I guess like three rounds of imports. It felt like three rounds, but it was four different suppliers or four, four rounds of imports, I guess. Like I've imported, were all three? Wait, one, two, Actually, I imported three times from Equigenera this year and then one time from a Thai Hoya supplier. And I've done a video each time I imported. So um, the first video would have been uh, import importing plants from Ecuador, I think was the, that video. The second video was the Equigenera pop-up video. And then the third video would have been um, my wishlist plant video where I got the last import that I got this year. So I'm just gonna go through them from the beginning to the end. I'll throw in clips of what they look like when I imported them and that's about it. <sighs> so the first import this year was in April, I believe like beginning of April, I think it was. And this was from Equigen... No, actually it was from Equiflora. So this is from Tropicals Equiflora and I imported five plants from them. Yeah, so scratch what I said earlier about Equigenera. I imported my first import from Equiflora and that was five plants. So where should we start? Let's start with, I guess, so in this import, I got two philodendron SP Columbias. And if you've ever looked at their price list, they have like SP Columbia, they have SP Silver, they have SP Silver Platinum, they have SP Silver something else. I don't really remember. They all kind of look the same, except for the Platinum, I will say like the one, actually, no. The one that Jing got when we imported looks very, like, very silver, like very light and bright. But I've also seen other people who got the platinum and it looks kind of like just the regular SP Silver. If you are importing from them, I will just say that, like, you never really know what you're going to get. But they had listed SP Columbia as a separate line from SP Silver on their price list. So I grabbed two just in the hopes that they would send me something like more green and less like silver. I'm gonna pop in some videos of when I got them. So I had one that was kind of like very narrow and um, quite green. It was, it was definitely much greener than my original SP Silver. And um, another one which had very closely spaced veins. I was so freaking happy when I got this plant. When I unboxed it, I was like in shock of how beautiful that leaf was. So the skinny kind of narrow one, this is him now. Um, he's a little bit dusty. I haven't um, wiped him off. So these two are import leaves So this big one here. It still held on really, really well, and it hasn't actually bleached very much, surprisingly. And um, this is the other import leaf here. Since then, it's put out this leaf. It's 
so it's a little bit smaller and then it's just unfurled this one I didn't realize that it had ripped itself so I probably didn't get to misting the sheath when it was emerging root wise it's done quite well um, it's in the original pond that I had uh, rooted it in when I imported it um, that was really hard to say is it amazing no um, but is it really cute I mean kind of it's okay I will say that I'm not very good at growing this plant and I think it just in general I'm better at growing anthuriums and philodendrons so you'll see that with like all the other philodendrons pretty much that I'm showing in this video but it is pretty easy I will say like I kept it in a bin for the first few weeks and then um, I think because I needed that bin for something else I just took that lid off the bin and they were just left in regular room humidity since then pretty much this actually currently lives in this exo here but that exo is not a very high humidity exo to my knowledge so it's like just barely higher humidity than out here on this shelf it was a uh, easy acclimator for sure and I think at this point it just needs to be fed a little bit more I have actually new um, feed that I'm gonna be trying out so I got some um, fertilizer from California when Charmaine was down there so we split a big bottle of um, a certain fertilizer I'll test it out and I will let you know what I think but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty good because our friend Amanda uses it so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually just take out pretty much all my other fertilizers and try to just exclusively use that one and see if I see a difference. What I'll probably also do is add CalMag in there but just use that fertilizer plus CalMag and I'll just try not to use my other fertilizers for the time being and see if I see a difference in the leaf growth. So yeah that's the first SP Columbia. The other one is this guy. So the big leaf from the import has died off already. I don't know why, there was like rot at the base of the petiole and the leaf just like kind of fell off. So that's the older leaf from the import leaves. And then since then it's put out um, first this leaf. So this was activated from an axillary bud because of the top leaf dying off. So this is a little bit more juvenile, but it's still really, really gorgeous. Like. The veins on that, like compared to, I'll show you the new leaf on the other one. There. They are quite different. Like this one here is quite a lot more spaced together. The veins I feel like droop downwards a little bit more. And this one's a little bit more puffy, pillowy. Um, color wise, I will say they're pretty much the same. Maybe this one is a little bit more silver than this one. But yeah, um, it then put out this leaf here. Oh my god isn't that stunning so so pretty it's not very big but it's really really pretty and then um, it's got a leaf emerging now so it's still juvenile it's still growing from the petiolar sheath but uh, this one also rooted okay the roots are really fine on this one you can see I would say the roots are pretty good they're just like very very fine so this one also currently lives in that exo but it also got ripped out of um, a bin and put in regular humidity but this one's probably like one of my favorite ones from that import. No, this one is definitely my favorite one from that import. So that's what it looks like now. I feel like I really lucked out when they sent me this one because yeah, it's like a really, really special one with the veining. I can't wait till it grows bigger. I think it will keep this like kind of venation pattern because this, uh, this is like a more mature leaf and look at that, it's beautiful. It's definitely a little bit bleached and it's probably on its way out. It's been kind of yellowing like this for a long time and it's kind of held on, but you can see the back of the leaf is quite yellow. So I think um, after one or two more leaves, this leaf is gonna go and then I'll just be left with this one, which is fine. Look at these two leaves together, so, so pretty. They are kind of crawling already. So you know how SP Columbia's can kind of climb for a bit and crawl um, a little bit like mames can kind of just behave however but I will say that both of these are like having kind of crawling tendencies it's definitely growing on a diagonal so I don't think I need to put them on poles or anything but I might have to like build up the pond in the pot a little bit higher so that it can root a little bit more so hopefully that would encourage the leaf 
um, size up. So there's that. Um, also in that import, I got a um, Anthurium Bessier app. So it's not doing amazing, I will say. Okay, so when I potted it up, I potted it in a drainage pot, but then I put like a deep saucer underneath it so it would have a bit of a reservoir. So this is what it looks like now. It's maybe lost one leaf, I think. Um, this is the leaf that grew in my care, so you can see that it had a little bit of drying out. It didn't form perfectly because this grew out in regular room condition. So it was before this EXO was put in. Um, it now currently lives in there, but this one kind of grew out in dry room conditions, so it didn't form perfectly. Oh no, I'm spilling everywhere. This was the biggest import leaf, right? Yes. This was the biggest import leaf when I came in. And I will say that it rooted quite well in the pond. The roots are looking quite healthy. I do see some um, import roots in there that are like brown, but honestly, like I'm not gonna do anything about it. So you can see some brown roots right here. This one definitely um, gets neglected a little bit. I let it dry out sometimes um, because that reservoir is not very deep. So. I could repot this into like a vessel with no drainage and it would probably be a little bit happier but I think I think it's coming back um hopefully it will put out a leaf soon it's hasn't it's not popping from the caterpillar just yet although no never mind I thought it was about to flower but it's not <laughs> this would actually be a cool plant to hybridize with because it's got such a cool shape and like the veining is so striking on the Bessier app. It's definitely not an anthurium that I'm like head over heels in love with, but it's still a nice one that I'm I'm not gonna get rid of it or anything. I, I do really really like it. So that was three so two more plants from the import. I got this Gloriosum. So this one was I imported the Gloriosum in the hopes that they would send me like the white veins form. But they sent me this form, which I didn't want, but whatever. They had a lot of leaves when I got it. Um, a lot of the lower leaves died, like they're very, very like tiny seedling leaves. And then it also had like fungal stuff happening at the back. So it would get these like black kind of mold on the backs of the leaves. So this happened in the bin and it doesn't really come off. It hasn't happened on the leaves since I moved it out of the bin. Um, but it hasn't grown amazingly. Like I honestly, I let this, let this thing dry out so much and I don't give it the best light either. So you can see how like tall the petioles are. So I think I've only grown like two leaves from this. So this was the first leaf grown in my care after the import. The second one, it rooted all right. I mean, Gloriosums I find are easy to acclimate. And it's the same story with this one. Um, this one also got taken out of the bin and it was kept in um, room conditions um, after about, I was I want to say three or four weeks from when it was imported. But the newest leaf is looking bigger and it's starting to crawl now. Yeah, I don't really know what much to say about this one. Like it's not a Gloriosum that I really wanted. So I'll probably sell this for not very expensive. It's, it's a Gloriosum Verde or whatever they call it. Uh, the last, Where'd it go? Uh, which, where the frick did I put it? Hello? Am I dreaming? Oh, the <laughs> So the last plant was the Philodendron Linamii. Did this plant change my life? No. Do I like it? I still like it. It was a fairly easy acclimator and I will say it's been pretty hardy and pretty tolerant of like drying out and lower uh, humidity. It rooted okay. Um, we got some pinky roots in here, but like this is since April, right? So this is like four months of root growth and yeah, it's not amazing by any means. It's grown one leaf in my care and it's about to pop another one. So this is the one leaf that grew in my care. And it wasn't even very pink when it came out. So like this plant has been like, just kind of like there 
and I'm like, okay, eyeliner on me eye. I think if it wasn't so tall and gangly, I would like it a little bit more, but like these petioles, I don't know how to describe it. They're very, very skinny and like kind of wiry and I don't know, it just like, it wasn't um, a life changing plant, but it's not like I don't like it. I just don't feel that much for it right now, but I know that it has the potential to be a plant that I really, really enjoy because when I see photos of more mature Linami eyes on Instagram, I do really like them. I like how, like the shape of them and like this kind of wide sinus that they tend to grow. I do enjoy it, but <laughs> what is this leaf? <laughs> this is so stupid looking. This will definitely be a work in progress and we'll see how it goes. Um, once it sizes up, I'm sure I'll like it more. So I'm not gonna get rid of it or anything. I had chopped the, um, the stump off at the bottom and given it to Charmaine and I think that started to grow foliage so I hope that it grows into something cute for her because it's so small you can give it a little bit more light and hopefully it will throw kind of like shorter petioles for her and it'll be a little bit more like compact and and I'm just kind of like not not like this kind of situation but yeah this is her right now she's okay I can't believe actually how cheap these have gotten which is great for people who have been wanting this for a really long time. I think um, Equigena was having a sale right now and it was like, if I'm remembering correctly, it was like 50 bucks or something like that. Like, or maybe even less. It was really, really cheap. And I remember like um, maybe a year, a year and a bit ago, it was like 500 bucks US for, for an import. That's, that's a lot. So I didn't get it for that much though. Don't worry. Um, I got this, I think for like 90 bucks. I think it's not amazing but it's not it's not bad so that's the last plant from that import I will say everything I mean everything obviously survived um, nothing is doing like incredibly amazingly but then again like they were pretty much all philodendrons and I'm just not that good with philodendrons so we'll get there I think um, the ones that I'm definitely keeping all of them and I'll probably get rid of the gloriosum or give it away or something. I don't know. Um, I just don't, I, it's just, this thing just takes up space and it's just not my favorite. So my camera is freaking overheating. Please hold. Okay, I'm back. So in that same week, I got a Hoya import. So this would have come in from Thailand. And this was a Hoya I really, really wanted. I had imported it before and it died, um, but I wanted to try again because I definitely wanted to grow this one in my collection. So this one is the Hoya Hypolasia. It's still alive. And in fact, it's finally started to grow. So I have actually two growth points. So you can see that vine here at the top. And then if you can see here, right here, there's a little vine kind of growing out there as well. So we definitely have roots, like we got roots here, and then we got a root here you can see. Maybe you can see, I can't really see. It looks like leaves are forming on this vine, right? And um, yeah, I, I am actually shocked that these leaves held on because they looked so wrinkly and even in fact right now, they still look quite wrinkly, right? Just see, like, they're very, 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 like, firm, but the surface of it doesn't have, like, a wrinkle to it. And I'm not, I'm not talking about, like, that pleating. I don't know if it's gonna show up on camera, but it, there is, like, a wrinkle to them. Like, there is some kind of water content missing in that leaf. And I would say a little bit the same on this one, but this one you can see a little bit more, or at least I can in person, um, because it's a bigger leaf. But anyway, this one is alive. It's been in the same container this whole time. This one is like in a mix of pond perlite and orchiata. Um, and I actually have some of um, Jing's like homemade pond because I can see her like really, really blue zeolite in here. This lives in my Hoya cabinet under like, Ten, uh, two 10 watt lights, but they're not super close to this one. But uh, I am so relieved that this one survived because it's not like a cheap Hoya and it's also not that easy to get in my experience. Whenever I try to import it from this supplier, 
it's like a 50 50 chance of them having it or not and whenever they do send it it's like a one node cutting so i am not about to spend more money trying to import this plant or acquire this plant so i'm relieved that it survived because i really did want it but i didn't want to try a third time to import it if you know what i mean so that one is surviving and I'll definitely show updates on it when it actually grows foliage because right now like all I have to show is still the import leaves. So yeah, Hoya Hypolasia. So that was April's import and then in I want to say May and I think it was like mid or end of May there was an Equigenera pop up at Bandula Farms. So. If you remember um, Charmaine and I filmed there, I showed the orchid talk from Eugene from the um, Orchid Society. So in that import, let's see, I had purchased an, a Gloriosum, it's actually this one, I'll show you it later, but the Gloriosum was purchased from the live sale. So they were showing like these gigantic mother plants that were like 200 bucks and then they showed like what they called medium ones for like 40 bucks. And I got one of those and it actually turned out to be quite a good size. Actually, I get this question, uh, not a lot, but kind of often is that like, is it worth it to get the really, really giant ones or should I get a medium one and just kind of grow it out? And if it was me, I would still go with like the medium one just cause I don't think that the size difference kind of is justified by the price difference if that makes sense like it's not like $150 bigger you know so uh, I would definitely go with the um, medium size if you can I think um, the ones that they sell as zebra are a little bit smaller and I think um, it's not really that worth it to get zebra and I don't know maybe if I don't know if it's like worth doing a whole gloriosum video but I do have quite a few gloriosums that um, start to grow more zebra -y in higher temperatures. So I have one, two, three in my tent right now. And we've gone through a few like heat waves this summer and they're not like, like epic heat waves like it was last year. Like last year I was getting like insanely like bright zebra leaves, but the zebra started to come back again this summer. And in the fall, I guarantee you they're gonna go away and they're gonna get those like kind of thin, clean uh, veins again. But right now I'm getting like more zebra -y type leaves. So I don't really think that it's all that worth it to get zebra unless you can just keep the temperatures up. But at the same time, is it really worth it to pay extra for zebra when you can kind of induce it yourself by temperatures, you know? Oh, my camera's heating up again. It might cut out. Okay, so in that order, I got, um, actually I only ordered, pre-ordered that Gloriosum and I'll show you in a bit, but I, at the show, I picked up um, Anthurium Nigrolaminum GG. So this one I fell in love with when I saw it at North Shore Tropicals. She has like a gigantic one. I'll see if I can plug in some footage here. So they had seedlings at the show or what they call seedlings. They're they were pretty big for seedlings, so these were quite a lot cheaper. And this is still a fairly new plant to Equigenera, so the, you know, like all the prices start high and they kind of get lower and lower as time goes on. I don't know how much they are right now, but this one I got from for a fairly decent price. This one was potted in pond and it was given great white and it did root. Yeah, it's, I think um, a lot of the import roots actually survived and it started rooting fairly quickly, just not like, crazy fast at rooting and it did drop a lot of the tiny seedling leaves so like the ones that are even smaller than this those ones kind of went you know like the ones that are like just like a spade shape and I don't have like too much damage on the leaves in terms of yellowing but there is like one little yellow tip here and it finally started to put out a leaf so this is a new leaf that emerged I want to say like a week ago, so we still have a ways to go, but I'm so excited. Look at the lobes on that one. It's so freaking cute. If you've never felt a Gigi in person, um, it's so satisfying of a texture. It is like really, really thick and there's like veins underneath it that give it this really like satisfying, like grainy texture. And it's very, very dark. Like it looks very almost inky green. I think it's showing up on camera as dark as it is in person. So that's 
good. So that's the newest leaf, well, the newest import leaf. And uh, this is the newest leaf grown in my care, the only leaf grown in my care. And I don't know if you can see, but there's like red in the sinus. Yeah, if I tilt it here, you can see the sinus is red. It's so cute. And I'm loving how tall the lobes are. So I don't know this plant well, but I think that it probably has um, like two to three more weeks of expanding before it's fully hardened. I'm very relieved that this one um, survived. Honestly, like I'm glad Charmaine got a replacement GG from Amanda, but I could have easily cut mine for her as well. So um, if you are on the fence about this plant, I would say uh, maybe get a seedling size, which actually you can see this one is, it's a fairly substantial size for seedling and just like grow it big. From what I've seen of larger specimens, the leaf size up can be pretty significant on this one. You know how like some anthuriums don't size up as drastically? I feel like this one has the potential to do that. So I would get a seedling size, save yourself some money and get yourself one of these plants. I think that Equiflora sells this as SP Napo and then Equigenera sells this as Nigrolaminum GG. And then it's being kind of called Nigrolaminum on the internet, on Instagram. I actually don't photograph this for Instagram because I can't capture it. Maybe this new leaf I will be able to photograph in a way that like I feel justifies and represents the plant properly, but until now I haven't been able to do it. So there was that one. And then in that show, I purchased three orchids. I do not remember the names of them. So the first orchid is one that I had seen. So when Eugene was doing his orchid talk, he had brought a bunch of his personal orchids and kind of kept them on display there. And there was one lady slipper orchid that was just incredible. And it had these like really long whiskers that kind of grow and they, they keep growing until they like touch the ground. And the point is that um, it's to allow ants to climb up them and, you know, pollinate the plant. So I was absolutely in love with that plant and um, I really wanted to be able to grow those flowers. So I picked that one up. It's done okay. I've tried to kind of do what Eugene told me to do, which is to kind of keep a little bit of water reservoir because he told me that they are found growing near to like running water. So it's kind of used to having water all the time. So I tried to keep a reservoir in here. I've let it dry out a couple of times, if I'll be really honest, but it has rooted. I have no clue if that's a healthy looking orchid root. Like I have not properly or grown orchids. Like I've grown uh, jewel orchids, but I haven't really taken them seriously. So I don't know really what I'm doing. This one's been living in my tent this whole time and it's still in the sub same substrate. So um, I potted it in like very, very chunky perlite, like, like you know, like the big asteroid size perlite and um, mixed with orchiata and sphagnum moss seems to be doing okay. Um, this one is actually the one orchid that grew a bunch. So um, there's like this foliage here that's new, like the very, very shiny green one. Um, which one else? Uh, there's a new shoot coming in. Where my finger is? Just trust me, there's a new shoot coming in there. And there was another one, I thought, or maybe not. So maybe it's just grown two shoots, but it looks like more foliage is emerging out of this one. I don't know if I need to change up the feed a little bit in order to trigger it to bloom, which I really, 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 really want it to bloom. But um, yeah, this one was not a difficult one to acclimate. I feel like it started to grow maybe after a month, a month and a half. Um, they started to grow foliage. Yeah, I guess I'll update you. I'll, I mean, I'll definitely, I'll definitely talk about this more once it flowers, but until then it kind of just looks like a pineapple. So, um, so there's that one. Another orchid I got is this one. This one is, so this one, I actually have the tag in here. This one is called Paphiopedulum senemore. So this one has cute leaves. 
but it also has like really really um just kind of mean looking flowers which i really really liked so this one um is in the same perlite orchiata sphagnum moss mix this one that I, i've actually kept more hydrated than the other one and i don't know that it grew any roots but i can see live roots in here like there's one right there and it put out one leaf i think two leaves so this would have been one of the leaves that it put out in my care and this also lives in my tent no sign of a flower yet i was told to put it in my tent to give it warmth and beyond that i don't know if like it needs different fluctuating temperatures in order to flower if anyone is an orchid person i know um there are some orchid people here and if you can kind of guide me on how to get these orchids to bloom i would love to know um or maybe it's just a seasonal thing i need to wait it out but i'm getting a little bit impatient last one is a plant <laughs> it's a plant this last orchid is called Mastavalia falcata. If I remember correctly, it had red blooms, I think, and they were, they're like also very like vicious looking. It's thriving. So if you didn't know, this is what um, an orchid that is loving life looks like. And that's what an orchid that is loving life sounds like. Yeah, this one died. Um, I don't know why. I didn't really take it out to inspect it. It was a time of my life where I just simply did not have time to do these like extra little chores. So like the plants either needed to survive or not. And this one did not survive. So I'm not heartbroken over it. It wasn't really expensive. Um, I mean, as an orchid newbie, I think that it was inevitable that I would kill one. So this one was one that I killed, unfortunately for him. He didn't go to a more experienced grower. I'm very sorry. Yeah, this one is dead. This is uh, the one import that failed to acclimate in my care. There's not much I can say about it. I kind of did the same for this one as I did for the other ones. And this one just didn't appreciate my efforts. Okay, so last, right? Yes, last uh, last one from that show is this guy. I just love him so much. So this was that Gloriosum that I talked about that I got from the live sale. So if you would have watched uh, Charmaine's latest video, um, that was our collab. It was like us comparing plants that we have the same of and how they look different, if we're growing them any differently, just kind of like who's growing it better kind of video. So uh, I will link that in the description for anyone who hasn't watched it. But anyways, if you watched that video, you would have seen this plant. So this was the Gloriosum that I had pre-ordered from Equigenera in May, so about three months ago. And it was potted up on camera in my usual pond mix with um, perlite and orchiata, and it's rooted really, really nicely in here. And in fact, it's been ready for a repot for a while now because you can see that the stem is already starting to climb out of this. I bet you if I leave it longer, it's gonna crack this pot. So it's like fully smashed up against the side there now. So this is like pretty high on my list of urgent repots to be honest, but this one was such a successful acclimation. So this one was um, in my tent this whole time. It's still living in my tent. These are the two import leaves here, I think I already mentioned. I don't remember. <laughs> They're still holding on strong. Um, they, yeah. This one leaf had a bit of that like black mold as well, but the newer leaf doesn't have it. So I don't really remember when that appeared, but anyways, I don't really want to put systemic fungicide on it because this one is inoculated with great white. So I'll see if I can just like wipe it off or just leave it and see if it does anything bad, but it doesn't seem to be like showing up on the fronts of the leaves. It's just on the back. But yeah, this one is such a perfect, perfect new leaf. And this leaf, emerged out of the caterpill that was when it came in it was like broken not in half but like the tip of it was broken i was convinced that it was going to give me a stunted leaf or like a, a 
like a like a damage leaf but it actually gave me like a quite a big size up right so this is yeah this would have been the newest leaf when it was imported and this is the leaf that was growing out of that broken caterpillar. I love this leaf so much I would love it more honestly if it was like wider but it is so symmetrical and so perfect I love love this leaf so you can see how like under in warmer conditions like the veining becomes a lot more um, bright but also like more vivid and thick more of the secondary venations coming out and it's not as visible on this one but on my other Gloria Sims there I have two other ones in the tent which um, are not part of this video but they are showing more of that zebra look so yeah this one was a successful acclimation um, if you're importing Gloria Sim, I do highly recommend pond for rooting it if you need to stabilize it I you can always put like um, like river rocks to help stabilize it so you can see that I had a rock here to stabilize it it's no longer it's no longer needed um, but once it starts to root it's going to stabilize itself but in the beginning you can always put rocks around the stem to kind of make sure that it's stable and it's not flopping over I think warmth is the most important thing for Gloriosum at the beginning to get them going and like humidity definitely helps to kind of stimulate roots along the, the stem but light it doesn't need much to be honest um, I think it, I find my Gloriosums bleach fairly easily in the tent even with the 10 watt Verena lights except for this one Gloriosum that I have that just like doesn't bleach under even very strong light it does not want to bleach and it stays super dark which is really weird. This is Anthurium extipulatum. This was imported in May at the Vandula Equigenera show. It's kind of like this leathery, thick, um, kind of medium green, veiny, sub velvety Anthurium that was, as far as I'm aware, fairly recently named. So when I got it, it had three leaves. It was looking pretty healthy. The roots were kind of like they were numerous but a little suspicious because they were super bleached white it had like no root fuzz on it whatsoever so it had obviously been like treated very aggressively for Fido um, but yeah if you want to see what it looks like now this one is also thriving so this leaf grew <laughs> my care and it uh, dropped all the other leaves in fact let's see if i can pull this off yeah there's one leaf but uh i think yeah I, there's a new leaf emerging out of the sheath now so it's gonna go again the trouble with this is that um a lot of its leaf, uh, roots rotted in acclimation so a lot of those like very bleached roots didn't survive i probably should have cut them off but I didn't. If I were to do it over again, would I cut them off? Probably. But yeah, this one actually also needs the water, but um, we finally have some acclimated roots growing. But you can see here, like these brown roots, these are like the import roots that did not survive and they've shed within the substrate. So let's, let's give him a little water while we're here um, and talking about him. So this is an example of a leaf that didn't get adequate water or nutrients while growing. It's probably a combination of both because it didn't really have roots to take up water or nutrients. But it did try and I commend you for trying. But uh, we'll see how the next one grows. But yeah, this one is a little weird anthurium because it's like a climber. I think that's that's okay-ish for water um yeah it's a climber you can see how um wide those internodes are so eventually this could be an anthurium you can actually get on a pole and i don't know like i really don't know what it looks like when it's like massive because there's just not a lot of photos on instagram or that's yeah that's pretty much my go-to place to find uh photos of plants but yeah this one wasn't the easiest for me and if I were to do it over again, I probably would have chopped the roots off and put it in pond so that it could grow a bit quicker and not kind of suffer like root rot symptoms. But it probably would have done the same thing, like grown a 
crappy leaf to begin with because it didn't have a root system to support itself. Honestly, I, it might not have turned out any different if I had chopped the roots off or not. But yeah, this, this is what it looks like now. We'll see how it does in the future. So the last plant I would have gotten in July. So this was the Equigenera show at Van Dusen Gardens if you're here in Vancouver. So I would have shown this in the video where I was showing the wishlist plants that I acquired. So at this Equigenera show in July, they brought plants from Equigenera, Florida. So usually it's coming straight from Ecuador, but they got some Florida plants in as well. So plants that we don't normally see. And I picked up this Philodendra bicolor. I still, I still love it very, very much, but it looks exactly the same. I don't really see roots in the substrate. No. Yeah, I see the import root, but I don't see new root growth. And the only root growth I can see is aerial roots up here. And I believe, yes. So this leaf that was um, emerging during import is dead. So let's just pull this off if I can. Yeah, the leaf tip was like very, very brown and wrinkly and that one just like pulled right off. And if, I bet you if I pulled this sheath, it's going to be all rotty inside. Let's see. I look like an ape. It's really hard to do this up to the camera because this plant is not super stable. I'm going to have to do it back here. Yeah, this is all rotted leaf. So I'm going to focus there. That's all rotted leaf. Let's throw that away. But I've just uncovered the Renew growth that was within the caterpill and it's looking healthy. So I'm not um, worried about this plant, but um, I am waiting for root growth from within the substrate, which I don't see any of. But on the plus side, it looks exactly the same. Like it, there's no yellowing, there's no deterioration, it doesn't look thirsty, it looks well. It doesn't look like super perky, but it looks exactly the same in like the texture. Like it doesn't feel like a thirsty leaf. At least it's pushing out aerials. So it's doing something. It's trying to do something. So it's going to stay in my tent. It's currently living in my tent. It's not under bright light, but it's like on the top shelf. It's just kind of shaded a little bit from above by other leaves because it's it's so teeny tiny. So when it grows, I'm sure I'll have more updates and maybe I'll get it on a pole so it can grow nice and big. But yeah, I, I really love this plant. I just don't really have much to update you guys on, but I'm sure when the new leaf comes, I'm gonna be screaming. So yeah, that's the last plant, uh, Philodendron Bicolor from Equigenera. And it's doing, it's doing fine. It's surviving. What One last plant I wanted to show is not an import. Well, I mean, technically it is an import because it came from the States, but this would have been shown in my last video. I just wanted to show a quick little update on my Ace of Spades from Amanda because I'm just over the moon excited about this plant. So um, in the video, I would have shown a new leaf emerging. I just wanted to give you guys an update on how that leaf is doing. It's, it's growing. It didn't die off, so I'm really, really happy about that. This one is living in my tent and it's in tree fern fiber. And I'm actually going to water it right now, just in case it's, yeah, it's feeling a little bit nearing um, dry. So honestly, I looked in my tent just before filming this video and all of those anthuriums that are in there are propping new leaves. And I didn't even notice them coming in. So it's been like a fast growing kind of week for them, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, I did repot all of them into pond or tree fern fiber and I inoculated them all with great white. And I think all of them, let me see. I wanna say like all of them are popping new growth, which is really, really exciting. And it just shows you how healthy these plants were to begin with. So, but I wanted to show you just specifically this ACE because I promised you I would show you lots of updates. Yeah, this one's doing great and I couldn't be happier. And that about wraps up my import updates. 
you can tell that they kind of suffered a bit of neglect and I did, definitely didn't have time to baby them as I normally would my imports, but they've been doing okay. You can, you know, see that plants, they want to live, they want to survive and um, importing plants is not easy, but it's not that hard, especially if you have a way of keeping them warm, humid, watered with a nice area substrate. And you can see that I pretty much yeah, I've done I've done pretty much all of these plants in my pond mix other than the orchids and for me it's the substrate that I'm the most comfortable with at the moment. Like it's just my go-to and I think it's a really good substrate to acclimate imports in. But if you don't have access to pond, like just definitely like perlite. If you have access to orchiata, that's even better. And by the way, I use the classic grade orchiata, so the smallest grade that they do. But yeah, that about wraps things up. As usual, my background is still a work in progress and I will do a little plant tour of this room once everything's kind of like in their place and like I'm happy with it. Um, but this exo, this one here needs work. All this behind me needs work. Like I need plants kind of on risers and stuff, which I don't have right now. So I need to do some shopping before I can get them all kind of like set up nicely in a way that I'm happy with. But yeah, I am still planning on doing like the plants I'm getting rid of video, which a lot of you seem to want to see and I need to film it, but it's not going to be like a pretty video. It's going to have a lot of ugly plants, but I feel like a lot of you like to see ugly plants. Um, so yeah, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, please remember to give it a like and I hope you have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see you in the next one.